A huge limiting factor for people who are interested in moving abroad is often their career. So today, I'll discuss my career path and how living and moving abroad has impacted it. First of all, I was never a kid that had big career goals or dreams. I never had a dream of what I wanted to do when I grow up, except the closest thing I found was a journal, I think, in second grade where I said I wanted to be a ballerina, but... I quit ballet after 10 years, so that didn't happen. In college, I pursued an English major, and that is not a pipeline that leads you directly to a job, like studying engineering might lead you to become an engineer. So my options were left pretty open-ended. But one thing people always ask you when you're an English major is, oh, do you want to be a teacher? And I did not. I was very adamant that I did not want to be a teacher under any circumstance. So I closed that off as an option. I graduated college a year early despite having no job prospects nor any internship experience. During my time in college, I had wanted to study abroad. It was definitely something that had interested me, but it never happened and graduating early was the best thing for me. So that is what I ended up doing. Since I had wanted to study abroad, I somehow found out about teaching abroad. And I thought, well, if I can't find any employment in the US, then I might as well look outside of the US. And I had a couple options right away. That summer after graduation, I was looking at jobs on a job board and I've talked about how to get jobs before. So I'll link those videos below if you're interested. But I found a couple jobs right away that were interested, one in Korea, one in Honduras. The Korean situation was a little bit more complicated and I would have had to look for the visa to get that job. But that was not in progress because I did not have my degree. That's a long story. I already made a video about that. And the Honduras option is what worked out for me. So I went to Honduras. I'd never been to Honduras before and I became a teacher, something I said I never wanted to do. And surprise, surprise, I didn't love it. Sadly, I have said this before in another video that I was definitely more teaching abroad for the broad part and not so much for the teaching part. I struggled a lot with classroom management and I found that that took up the majority of the time in the classroom rather than actual teaching moments. But there was something about teaching that I did find rewarding. And as I was looking for other ways to make some extra income, I did find a tutoring opportunity online with Open English. My gig with them didn't really last long because in my first tutoring session, the internet was very, very poor and I just felt, you know, I should just quit now because the internet is clearly not strong enough in my little Honduran apartment. When 2020 came around, I was actually quite relieved. I was grateful for the distance. I didn't have to do anything with classroom management. I was just putting out material online, grading things online, and that was fine for me. I discovered that I really enjoyed that life. So I taught virtual classes for a year when I first moved to the Dominican Republic, and I also discovered Cambly right around one year later. So it's sort of like Open English. I found this tutoring opportunity where I could teach and get that rewarding feeling without having to deal with the classroom management, behavioral management aspect, as much at least. Cambly is definitely the most flexible platform I've found. I think I recall with Open English, I had to be available for like an hour block or two hour blocks at a time. But with Cambly, I can open up my schedule for as little as 15 minutes at a time. And I don't have to have the same schedule every single day. I can change it week to week. I can open up my schedule for regular students or just kids or adults whatever I choose. I eventually did one more year of teaching in a classroom and despite my best efforts to try to make changes in my teaching style and try to improve my classroom management, it did not help. So after doing in-person classes for that next school year, I was calculating and I figured out I could make more doing just Cambly, working on my own schedule, working with one student at a time than I would doing the school and Cambly. So I did just that. I quit at the school and then I was on my own. And if I wasn't living abroad, I don't feel like I would have had the freedom to fully be able to pursue that position. So with Cambly, you're considered an independent contractor. And that is something that I never really considered for myself. I never considered being self-employed or doing my own sort of startup gig sort of thing. But with Cambly, that's essentially what you are. You are using the platform, but you don't get a W-2 or anything. So I was essentially self-employed for that whole next year. And if I hadn't been living abroad, that would not have paid for my living expenses. Anyone can look up how much tutors make on Cambly. It's not a lot. And when I was in the US, I did pick up a side job there because even the most basic job made me a little bit more than Cambly. But living here, 
it is nice to have that freedom. I can work a couple hours at a time. I can change my schedule based on the week. I can take a vacation without anybody asking for anything from me. And it's been very good for flexibility. It's something that I would highly recommend, having a job where you can control your own schedule. And that has been a great experience. The only thing that was not great was the pay, but since I was living here, it didn't even matter, especially being married. My husband takes care of the bills for the house and things like that. So my income wasn't really that important for living here, but eventually for moving back to the US and saving, I did want to try to make a little bit more. So this year, happily, I found a new job and that has been excellent because it pays a lot better. It's sort of the same thing. Another tutoring job where I'm working one-on-one -on -one with students, which personally I feel is the most rewarding, the most fulfilling style of teaching for me. And with this new company, I do get a W-2. I am considered a part-time employee. So yes, I can't have more than part-time hours. So it works to balance both Cambly and some new tutoring options as well. It's also very flexible with the scheduling. The only thing is I have to have the same schedule every day of the week on Cambly I can change based on the day. They also do have higher attendance expectations, but I think this has been a good move for me to get something a little bit higher paying, at least for during the school year. You also need at least three hours of availability between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern time, which is not a problem. The great part about the Dominican Republic is it almost aligns perfectly with Eastern Standard Time. So it's not a problem. I just adjust when it's daylight savings time or not. So I think moving abroad has really changed what I would have thought my life would become. In college, I was imagining maybe I'll work for like a magazine or something, being an editor. And I tried a little bit to did sort of like an internship, volunteer program, writing for an online magazine. But living abroad definitely changed what I thought I wanted. I realized, you know what? Teaching is something really rewarding. I do like working with kids and especially when it's one-on-one, -on -one, I don't have to worry about managing 30 of them at once. So that's something I probably never would have discovered if I had just looked for an editing job or working for a publishing company, a magazine, something like that. And I'm so glad that I did because it really has been a very rewarding career choice. And now with a new company, especially I'm specifically working on reading skills with the kids. I love reading, so helping them learn a skill that is so basic. I feel like I've seen this a lot in the news lately because it's true. Reading levels in the US for students are just not where they should be. So working at something that I really feel like I'm making a difference in has been huge. And I can't say I ever would have discovered this if I had not moved abroad. I went to teaching and then transferred to tutoring. So following this career path from teaching to tutoring, staying in the education space, even though it was a space I thought I always wanted to avoid because I was just so sick of school and I never wanted to go back, has really been a positive experience for me. It's also opened up the idea of working for myself, working from home, working remotely, which I think also 2020, all those events helped with as well. And I just can't even imagine what my life would have been if I had not moved abroad and I had not discovered tutoring online one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to move abroad, you'll probably have to decide if you want to work for a U.S. company remotely, which in that case, I always recommend making sure they will accept you working from another country or looking for a job in the country you move to. I know, for example, that in Japan, I believe they do want foreigners because their population is aging. They don't really have enough people in the working generation. For countries like that, you might be able to find a job easily in your field. And of course, there's always teaching abroad. I don't know how many people on my channel are interested in teaching abroad, but it's definitely an option. So you will have to decide if you want to work remotely, but for a US company or try to find work in the country you're living in. I recommend the former option, honestly. Depending on what country you're moving in, if you don't have a handle on the language, it might be hard to find a job in your specific industry. And you might not be making as much money as you would hope to make. It can also be hard depending on the visa situation of the country. The Dominican Republic is kind of flexible with the visa situation. You can work here, at least I worked here without having a work visa. Other countries are more strict with it, probably like countries in Asia or Europe, but it is a decision that you have to take into consideration. I always recommend working from home. I think it's been great for me. I am able to get my social 
needs met going to church, hanging out with friends, spending time with my husband's family, things like that. It's not really something I miss too much. And I think one important thing to let go of if you are planning to move abroad is letting go of the notion that money will make you happy. Actually, I think that's a good thing to let go of no matter what you decide to do in life because I think a lot of us stay in the U.S. We stay in the system of climbing the corporate ladder and looking for the next promotion, the next job because we want to be happy. We would think that making more money will get us there. So if you can let go of that, especially if you are planning to look for a job in the country you live in, then that would be great because more than likely you'll be making significantly less money than you would be working the same job in the U.S. But one benefit of moving abroad, especially in a country where the cost of living is less than it is in the U.S., is that whatever money you do make will go farther and you will be able to maintain your same standard of living that you were accustomed to in the U.S. with less money because the U.S. is a very expensive place to live. I think we all know this, but living abroad can really help you to save money in one aspect because you're not going to be spending your entire paycheck on basic living expenses and it could also help you just learn to be happy with less. So in this episode of how moving abroad changed my life with regards to my career, it has definitely had a positive impact. It has also helped me fully embrace and given me the courage to fully embrace myself and that is just a person who does not really care about climbing the corporate ladder and all that. And moving abroad also opened up new opportunities like starting this YouTube channel which didn't make me a cent for a long time but I think last year it was about 5% of my income so nothing big, nothing crazy but it's something that I started to share my experience abroad so even though I wanted to start a channel before it's probably something I wouldn't have done if I hadn't moved abroad. So there are lots of opportunities to be opened up if you are moving abroad and if you're someone who doesn't feel like you fit into the corporate culture in the U.S. or hustle culture, then moving abroad might be right for you because you can fully live out your dream of just sort of forgetting about that, experiencing other things in life, and pursuing other life goals and interests. I hope this video was helpful or meaningful for someone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!